I've been very fortunate in my years as a YouTuber to have tried out or reviewed all levels of pedals from what you'd consider starter or beginner pedals on up to fancy load cell pedals costing a thousand dollars or more. And I can honestly say that these SimForge Mark 1s that I've got in front of me right now are my strongest recommendation to date. Absolutely off the charts value, phenomenal performance, and I'm very excited to review them for you today. All right, so as mentioned, these are my SimForge Mark I pedals. This is actually the dark edition. You can tell that because it's darker than the regular edition. It has uh, aluminum extrusion in the build and it is black as opposed to the standard brushed aluminum, I guess, uh, color of the standard Mark I's. And these were sent to me for free for review, uh, but no money changed hands. I don't offer affiliate links and the words and opinions are my own. And I could not be more excited, as I said in the beginning, to review these pedals. Um, so you might remember I did sort of a preview, I guess about so four weeks ago maybe, of uh, these Mark Ones and tested them out. Uh, but what I didn't mention or what I haven't mentioned is that I've been testing them ever since. The reason, in all honesty, is that I wanted them to break because um, I got such a great first impression from them. And then these being priced at 440 US dollars, um, that's for the dark edition, the standard edition, if you don't care about the color, is about $400. Um, and I was so impressed with them at this price point that I thought there's no way it can be this good. Uh, there must be something that eventually wears down. There must be something that breaks. It must stop working. What am I giving up going from you know, a, a set of pedals that cost six or $800 to these $400 pedals. Um, and I'm pleased to say after the, all those weeks of testing that I'm as impressed as I was on day one, nothing has worn down, nothing has broken. They've been absolutely bang on. And so, uh, as I said, again, in the intro, uh, this is my strongest recommendation for a set of pedals ever. Um, so super stoked to be here reviewing these for you today. Um, let's talk about what this is. SimForge Mark 1 edition, uh, Mark 1 Dark Edition rather, uh, three pedal set, obviously you've got your clutch, you've got your brake, you've got your um, accelerator. Accelerator and clutch use a Hall Effect Sensor 10-bit. Uh, the brake uses a 24-bit and it also has a load cell equipped, uh, which is kind of confusingly rated at 80 kilograms, uh, but it can take the ultimate force rating of 150% of that. So in other words, 120 kilograms is what you could subject it to. Um, those three are mounted, I'm going to flip it up here, hopefully you guys can see that, onto black aluminum extrusion. Uh, you've got the two that are running up and down right now uh, that kind of support the foot plate, and then the main 40 by 120 aluminum extrusion uh, that supports the pedals. So what is the advantage of using aluminum extrusion for a pedal build while you have a huge amount of freedom. So if I swing these around, not sure you'll be able to see it entirely, uh, but each pedal has four bolts and uh, those are uh, attached with uh, with nuts, of course. And the nuts sitting in the channel uh, give you the freedom to move these left and right as you please. That's not an entirely unique feature, of course. Um, a lot of pedal sets you might find uh, will offer that freedom of moving it in and out, but probably few as much as this. So um, if for whatever reason you wanted to have all three pedals compressed to about this width, you could. You could squish them all to this side um, or whatever you choose quite frankly. Uh, you will also notice on the pedal faces here there are bolts. Those can be backed off and you have some pedal adjustment there. Uh, you also have uh, a second and third channel on each of the pedals so you can move it left and right as well. So uh, there's even more degrees of control you have in terms of how the pedals line up. Um, switching around, uh, if you're looking at the clutch pedal here you can see the holes here that uh, adjust the travel of the spring. Now that's going to uh, adjust the overall strength, uh, but you also have a hole up front that will allow you to change the, the pitch of the pedal. Um, what else can you do? Uh, these long bolts here, sorry, these long bolts here for the accelerator and brake, that helps to tension it so you can increase or decrease the tension. Um, Let's see, one of the other features here, uh, this footrest, as you can probably see, uh, on both sides there are these bolts and these channels. Actually, this is less a channel and more of a, uh, 
uh, pivot, uh, but you can adjust the height. So if you're not happy, if, if your foot is resting on here and maybe you have small feet, maybe your toes are hitting here and you want, of course, the ball of your foot to be uh, pressing that clutch, well, you can do so. You can adjust the uh, foot rest height and get that ball up there, or this is the lowest position here. Um, so again, just even more adjustability. I'm trying to think what else we have. Um, there are channels. These pedals actually sit, the, sorry, the bolts that hold the pedals down sit in a channel so you can move the pedals back and forth, only probably an inch or so, but still more freedom. So just an unbelievable amount of, well, I wouldn't say unbelievable, but an, an impressive amount of customization options uh, with these SimForge Mark I pedals. Um, also included, firstly, uh, this. It includes a bunch of extra elastomers and an extra spring. So if you choose, you can pull this assembly back here apart and adjust the strength of, or the amount of resistance you have in your brake pedal. Brake pedal is of course the most important pedal you have. And uh, yeah, SimForge thought of that and they included some adjustments here so you can uh, get set up with the brake pressure you like. Um, again, I think I spoke about it earlier. Yeah, I did uh, 80 kilogram load cell down there. And also included, and I'll talk about this more when I get into the actual review, but this little control box here is what all the pedals uh, plug into. So you can uh, actually just plug those in one by one into your, uh, into your control box, mount this somewhere, and then you're up and running. Why is this not pre-assembled, you might be saying? Well, it's because these are fully modular pedals and you can buy them uh, either individually, you can buy a set of two here, you can add the clutch later. Um, and then if you don't want to pay for their extrusion and you want to mount this straight onto your rig, you may do so. Get one of these and uh, just plug it in and you're good to go. It is plug and play with Windows, by the way. Uh, the cables are included, as are all of the uh, bolts uh, and uh, nuts required to uh, to get these mounted. Uh, there's simple instruction videos, not great instruction videos. <laughs> I think it's a Google Drive link, frankly. And uh, you go there, you watch this little video, and it gets you up and running. It's not tremendous. <laughs> I would love to see them move that to YouTube. But uh, broadly speaking, uh, there are uh, build videos to help you along. Um, but yeah, I'm just so, so impressed by the level of customization you have with these Mark I pedals. Um, the build quality feels fantastic. Again, I've been testing these for several weeks now and uh, nothing has started to move in the slightest. Really strong, they're, they're physically heavy. Like you can tell that uh, there's just a lot of metal present here and uh, it's been holding up beautifully. Very strong set of pedals, very well crafted, um, heavy duty and uh, just, at that price point, it almost doesn't make sense. It almost seems like there should be something that would have failed by now, but nothing. Um, I would say one thing, and I'll get into this more when I do my review perhaps, but um, you do have some like exposed wires in here and uh, you know, some, some circuitry that's, that's visible. Um, you know, you, you might not see that. Well, you would not see that in uh, in a build from other brands. Uh, tend, they tend to tuck that away for a number of reasons. Uh, firstly, it's not very nice to look at. Secondly, um, it's possible that dust can get in there. It's possible that you drop a screwdriver in there and damage some electronics. So that's one minor drawback is that they didn't uh, cover some of these exposed wiring areas. But broadly speaking, I would say it's... Uh, it's well put together and nicely aesthetic. Um, for mounting options, again, like everything else here, um, just huge levels of customization. So uh, there's two bolts that go on the back and uh, it's also a channel and uh, it's also mounted into the extrusion. So you can move these, um, I guess it would be left and right as you see fit. And also you have play in where the bolt goes uh, that's actually going to mount to your rig. Uh, the other one is here. Now I am actually going to change this eventually because it's too narrow. Uh, this to this is too narrow for me. So it's causing my uh, GT Elite uh, cockpit to, uh, it, it's just not how I like it. So I'm gonna take these off. I'm gonna swing them over to this arm here and then I will be able to spread those out a little bit more and uh, yeah, have a bit more flexibility in how I mount these to my rig. Um, but again, like everything on these pedals, uh, just huge levels of, uh, customization in terms of how these get mounted. So um, beautifully performing pedals um, and they've held up 
wonderfully. Uh, next up, I'm gonna show you the software and then we'll go for a drive and then we'll come back to the table. I'll tell you the good, neutral and bad of these SimForge Mark I pedals. Trust me when I say there's far more good than neutral or bad. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, look at the software and then we'll see you back at the table um, after the drive. So let's look at the software side of things. And as you can see, I'm starting off here at the SimForge website, simforge.in. You can see all these wonderful products they have, including my Dark Edition Mark 1s, 40 bucks less. You can get different colored extrusion and then you could even buy the pedals separately should you choose. But why I'm at the website is because it very much affects your experience with the uh, SimForge pedals initially. So if you go to manual and drivers thinking it'll be a quick download, sadly no. So you come to this section and it's just a Dropbox link and then you've got all these different folders and sections of the website and it's quite confusing. I did figure it out but uh, it did take probably 15 minutes to get it going. I just want a simple link. Let me download your software. Let me download the drivers for Windows and let me get off to the races, quite literally. So uh, unfortunate how their website is set up for this, but uh, it is all there. It's just gonna take some you know, review and, and time and effort that shouldn't necessarily have to be put into a new set of pedals. So rather unfortunate, but once you get things set up, you will have something like this. So we have a couple, we have dark and light edition. For some reason, I prefer the light, which is not normal. Um, if I depress my throttle, you can see the throttle go up. What a miracle. If I press my brake, you can see that brake go up. You can see I've assigned a curve to it. If you press the clutch, what do you think is gonna happen? Of course, the clutch goes. And when you calibrate, you go to calibration here. So you can see it's registering, even though my feet are completely off the pedals right now, uh, it is still registering some activity. Obviously not great. Great. So let's do the uh, calibration. So if I click start, it's going to say press the pedal all the way down and press next. Release the pedal, press done. Okay, so you can see it reassigned uh, the blue line, which is the start, um, and then the red should be the end of travel. I've got a top dead zone here, just in case when I'm in game, if I'm not able to press that all the way, it's not giving me any less than full throttle. So you can see it's shaking just above that blue line. So I'm gonna give it just a tiny bit of bottom dead zone. Brake, uh, same thing. Let's do a calibration here, all the way down. Next, release, done. Seems to be good, but what if you're like me and sometimes when you're driving you rest your foot on that pedal? Hey, guess what? Sign a bit of dead zone to the bottom there. Oh, well, that's quite a lot. 5% should do it, and that way you won't be accidentally braking. Um, and then, of course, you can do the same with the clutch. And I don't usually leave my foot resting on the clutch, but just in timber case, I can do that. And then you save the calibration. Save it to the controller, and there you go. So you're all set up now, and I got full travel. Oh, heavy brake. So you can see, uh, max force 34 kilograms. It is an 80 kilogram load cell, and uh, yeah. So that is how you set this up. Um, so the software is fine once you get into it. It's just unfortunate that uh, the initial, uh, when you're at the SimForge website that you're brought to this Dropbox link, it's just kind of unnecessarily confusing and I think they could do better. All right, so let's get this into a game and start testing these SimForge pedals. All right, so here we are in Assetto Corsa on board the Formula Beta 2008 here at Magion. A tight, twisty circuit and a whole lot of car to tackle it. So uh, I'm gonna be active on those pedals. Oh boy, already having troubles. But it is not the fault of these SimForge pedals. And that is why you are here to hear my opinion on how these things drive. And I'm pleased to say that it exceeds everything I thought these pedals would be. I thought next to my Husig Belt Sprints, I'd be giving up quite a lot, you know, half the price. You're going to have some compromises somewhere. And I mean, other than the sort of awkward assembly, uh, I would say that, you know, these are every bit as good. Like once you're actually in game with these things and, you know, uh, settling into using them, I don't detect anything that I'm giving up versus my Sprints. And I don't say that lightly, I think Houston Velt makes a phenomenal product and this is not a shot at all at Houston Velt. 
If you prefer the Husing Velds, you're going to be very, very happy with yours, as I have been with mine for several years. But in terms of performance, again, I love the feel of these Simforge pedals, and I feel like I am giving up nothing versus my Husing Velt sprints, and that's impressive to say. But Husing Velt comparisons notwithstanding, what do I love about these? Well, first and foremost, the feel of all the pedals. I know I'm only using two right now, I apologize about that, but you can go back and see my previous testing video if you want to see me use all three. But all three, clutch, pedal, excuse me, clutch, accelerator, and brake uh, feel phenomenal in their own right. Perfect smooth travel on that accelerator. Heavy brake, but uh, enough travel to make it feel probably more like what you would expect a brake pad, a brake pedal to feel like. But it does have those heavier elastomers too if you want to step the stiffness up. So really just a uh, perfect feel to the pedal as far as I'm concerned. Um, you know, I don't have a lot of experience with hydraulic pedals, uh, but just in my comparison to having driven, comparisons I should say of ha whoa, having driven uh, so many load cell pedals over the years, I definitely say these are in my top three and as good as any. Like, uh, my top three definitely includes my sprints, probably also includes, what else? I actually, I don't think there's anything else on the level of the sprints in these Simforge pedals that I own anyway. And uh, yeah, these are just truly phenomenal. That brake weight is perfect. My driving is not, but the, the weight of the brake is, and the travel of that accelerator is just buttery smooth. It allows you to do everything you need to do in terms of controlling the car. So just could not be more impressed with these pedals. And they are, you know, my new go-to, definitely. Great looking, great feeling pedals. And, uh, you know, if you're looking for a recommendation, if you only came here and don't want to see my face talking behind a desk, I get it. So if you just came for a quick summary, if you're at all considering these pedals, if this is in your price range, uh, strong, strong recommendation from me. Just a truly phenomenal feeling set of pedals a little a little bit of happiness comes through me every time I get to drive with these I couldn't use them with uh, EA Sports WRC uh, so when I got to go back to them immediately after I was done my beta testing or yeah I guess it's beta testing of EA Sports WRC uh, yeah just instant happiness again love these pedals so much all right, let's go back to the desk and I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, so time now for my final thoughts on these uh, Simforge Mark I Dark Edition pedals. I'm sure you guys know how this is gonna go, but uh, I'll go through it just the same. Um, good, things I like, neutral, things I'm just okay with, and bad, things I don't like. Starting with the good, number one is the price. Uh, 440 US dollars for what you see here, 400 if you don't care about color. You can also save a bit of money by going modular if you're able to provide your own um, aluminum extrusion solution. Um, just fantastic price. And um, I hate leading with price because I've done this before. And when people talk, when I talk about value, uh, people tend to comment, well, you didn't tell me it was a, whatever, 3,000 Delasi surcharge to get them imported into Gambia. And it's like, I, I don't know where you live. I don't know how much import tax and shipping is going to be to your region. What I can tell you is at its base, the price of this is phenomenal. Um, so you can talk to Simforge to learn more about shipping and pricing. Odds are they've shipped to your corner of the world before, and we'll know generally how much it'll cost to get to you. But, uh, <laughs> Thinking reasonably, um, I can't imagine, even if there were a heavy shipping charge for these, I can't imagine that, uh, you know, it would bring it up to the level that most pedals of this grade cost. So I'm going to stick with my guns, stick with my belief here that the price is a phenomenal selling point of these Simforge Mark 1s. And of course, the most important thing, um, once you own them, how do the pedals feel? Also, 
comfortably in the strong, in the good category rather, um, is the, the pedal feel, uh, very buttery smooth, no squeaking. There is there a squeak? Yeah, there's the slightest bit of a squeak there, but, um, uh, yeah, just buttery smooth and uh, so easy to use. And uh, yeah, they just feel so, so good. You connect with these pedals right away. There's no learning curve. There's no like, oh, my foot goes to the floor way too easy. You can adjust the strength how you like, um, but even right out of the box, even as they ship to you, they feel phenomenal. Um, and then the third in the good category, uh, the brake. Um, brake is the most important pedal in my opinion. And uh, this one, nice and strong. You can adjust how much uh, preload, I guess you would call it, how much travel there is before you start uh, loading up that load cell. And uh, yeah, it just feels phenomenal, very intuitive, and uh, so much adjustability. Um, 80 kilograms is not huge, but it's more than enough. In fact, when I went into the tuning software, you probably saw that I have it at less than half capacity. Um, so uh, really just a nice, nice uh, brake pedal overall. And uh, again, landing comfortably in the good category. Thirdly, let's talk about the looks. I love the looks of these. Uh, I still have my little um, inspection okay stickers on the pedals, so those could come off. But I think it's a nice looking set of pedals. I happen to have a lot of red and black in my setup. Um, if you do not, you can opt out of the dark edition, of course. Um, but I think just generally, uh, it's a good looking set of pedals and having the Simforge across the front there, a nice bright red. I think it's, uh, it's a good aesthetic overall. I, I like the looks of these pedals. And uh, next up, we talk about build quality. Again, I have put these things through the ringer I didn't hope they would break but I expected them to break and I put them through their paces for weeks on end thinking eventually something is going to give it did not build quality they feel extremely strong they've performed perfectly um yeah, so I, the, the build quality is off the charts. As long as I didn't absolutely hit the lottery and get the best set of pedals they happen to have ever made, um, I would say that uh, you know there's there's a good degree of build quality here um, that's going to last you for a very long time. And you talked, you heard me talk about this earlier, but uh, the level of customization. I mean, I'm not going to go through it again, but just every facet, every dimension of these pedals can be adjusted. The aluminum extrusion uh, gives you so many options for how you want these pedals to line up, how you want this all to come together, how you want it to look, how you want it to feel. Um, and yeah, just massive, massive levels of customization. And I love it. And just two more to go. Um, the footrest height adjustment, very cool. Um, I own a lot of other pedals that I love and, you know, would uh, also recommend strongly to you, but none have the footrest adjustment. It's such a, I wouldn't say simple thing, but it's such a much needed thing in so many cases. Not everyone has the same size feet. So, I mean, if you're not getting the level of customization you want by, you know, the bolts that are in the pedal face, um, this is a great way to do it. You can make up uh, millimeters instead of, you know, whatever gap this is. So uh, footrest adjustability, right on SimForge. That was a great idea. It worked out very, very well. And lastly, I always go on about this, but the included parts, um, that's very cool. Uh, we also got all the bolts uh, that we need and nuts and uh, cables. So this is something that's big for me when I do hardware reviews is I don't want to have to go digging through my tool chest. I don't want to have to go to the hardware store to buy these things. And uh, thankfully SimForge thought of that. Uh, they've included everything you need to get up and running, uh, including mounting bolts uh, to mount this to your rig. So again, massive thumbs up. And moving now into the neutral category, things I'm just kind of okay with. Uh, the first one is the software. Once you're once you're in the software, it's fine, and it's not like you're going to be constantly tuning your pedals. Odds are, um, but yeah, the software is kind of cumbersome to get into, and uh, just kind of well. No, I, I actually like it when you get in there. You have a high degree of uh, of uh, adjustability uh, within that software. So I'll give the software itself a thumbs up, but uh, just getting to that point and having to download it, uh, they need to clean that up. It should be a single download, executable file, get this installed on my machine, let me tune my pedals. Um, so it's fine when you're in there, but not great to get to, so I'll put it in the neutral category. And also the assembly video, same kind of thing. It just feels kind of cheap. You go, you find the assembly video, and uh, you know there's no 
narration. You're just kind of watching and it doesn't tell you actually how to mount the pedals. It just shows you how to build the bass. So um, kind of an odd feature, um, but it, it got me there. I, I, I got them built in, you know, well under an hour. So um, it's all good, but uh, definitely they should start a YouTube channel. Uh, they should, you know, it's, it's a promotional tool and it can, they can show the full build of these uh, Mark I pedals. And uh, yeah, I think that would be a good option for them. And lastly, in the neutral category, uh, the compatibility. So uh, I did get this up and running with every single SIM I own. So it's not as if it's not going to work. However, uh, Windows sees it as an Arduino device. And um, so it's kind of awkward in terms of how it registers in some games. Um, I'm thinking specifically of EA Sports WRC. Uh, it was strange to see it come up as an Arduino device. Um, I'm used to that for button boxes. So um, there's just some weird sort of compatibility nuance there. It would be nice if it properly registered within Windows and uh, you know th that that would make it uh, better for so many reasons uh, but hopefully that's something they get to eventually uh, but start with the software SimForge and worry about the uh, the compatibility later but I, again I will say it worked with all games it's just kind of you have to know that you're working with Arduino uh, as opposed to SimForge within Windows and the bad now things I don't like uh, first one is this so you've got this uh, control box here. It's fine. It's got, uh, you know, the RJ connection for your brake. It's got the two USB ins for your uh, clutch and accelerator. And then the USB, let's call it USB out uh, to your computer. Problem is, where does this go? Where does this go? You can't even, because it's got these bolts that are proud on the bottom and on the top, you can't even use sticky tape to stick it under the underside of this. Uh, so it's just kind of unfortunate. You have to kind of put it off to the side, but you're limited by the cable length. So uh, again, just kind of awkward. And uh, I don't know what the solution is. It doesn't line up with the, or does it? Uh, yeah, I guess it could line up uh, with your Oh, but then you wouldn't be able to get the cable. All right, I thought I had a solution there. Uh, but anyway, I don't think it can go between the pedals because you need access not only to this side, you need access to this side of the control box. So it's just kind of awkward. I ended up, if you want to know, if you happen to buy these and are looking for where I put them, uh, I just backed a bolt off here and uh, it just kind of hangs off the side. Now, it's fine in my case because my rig is in a corner, but uh, if you have this in the middle of your floor and somebody was walking by, they might kick this and break it so it's just kind of an awkward thing I don't know where the best place is to put this but uh, yeah it's, it's, it's very awkward and uh, you know normally in a non-modular set this would be all these electronics would be built into the pedals but of course because you can buy them separately they want to give you the option to buy you know one two three and uh, unfortunately it creates that awkward situation so hopefully something gets rectified with that and lastly let's talk um, about the last in the bad category and that is the sort of pride of ownership and branding. Um, SimForge is not a well-known name uh, in sim racing. I hope they do become a well-known name because I think this product is phenomenal. Um, but yeah, it's just there's there's no like branding. There's no YouTube channel. Uh, there's barely any social media presence whatsoever to talk about. Um, and it would just be nice if they built their brand up a little bit and made these a little bit more desirable. As it stands, it's these phenomenal pedals that you have to convince other people are cool. <laughs> and so uh, that same level of, you know, when you open the box of like a uh, Logitech is great for this. You open up a Logitech box and it's all nicely laid out in the box and you feel cool for having owned it. Um, same with Fanatec. You open up a Fanatec box and it's got some slogan. If you're not first, you're last. It's not actually that but something like that. And so there's, the, there's that fun, that pride of ownership. No such thing with SimForge. This just kind of came in a generic cardboard box, uh, minimal branding. And again, no social media to check in and say, hey, SimForge, thanks so much. I love your pedals. And so there's just that sort of absence of branding. And it's just kind of, again, you kind of have to convince people they're cool. So it'd be cool to see them step that up. But that is minor. So my final thoughts on these pedals, um, I would say if you're at all in the market for a set of pedals uh, under $1,000, 
definitely give serious consideration to these pedals. Again, I don't have any affiliate links, so it, it, it costs me nothing whether you buy or don't buy these pedals. But I would say um, these are, in consideration to value, uh, the best pedals I have ever reviewed. Um, are they better than the Husingfeld Sprints? No, but they're on an equal plane and they come in at 400 US dollars or 440 for the dark edition you're seeing here. Um, so again, in consideration, in deference, if you will, to the price, this is the best set of pedals I have ever featured on this channel. Absolutely phenomenal. They perform great. They've lived on my rig since I've owned them, save for some uh, messing about with, uh, with EA Sports WRC. And immediately after this review, they are going back on because I can't get enough of these pedals. Phenomenal job uh, by SimForge. I hope I see more of these in the future on the market. I hope they clean up the software. I hope they you know, build up sort of a brand campaign around these uh, because definitely they deserve it. Such a fantastic piece of gear and uh, massive thumbs up. Hall of Fame uh, piece of gear uh, on this channel for sure. Um, just so good. So um, SimForge website is linked in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to SimForge for sending me these and we will see you next time.